Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. And as always, all of today's stories are time marked down below in the description. Let's hop into our first one, though, the most important one all around John McDonald and Valve. And of course, their response this past week has been amazing. And also, uh, kind of sadly, it's been record setting. In the past week alone, we've had Valve respond not once, but actually twice, as well as with an FAQ. This is the most time, I think, and I guess we could say probably history, that Valve is actually taking the time to respond. And when I say Valve, I mean pretty much John McDonald, who's finally answered the one question all of you guys, he did not answer a couple days ago during his, his Q&A, uh, which I'll link my video down below if you guys did not see that, as well as the Q&A article uh, on the forum thread as well. John McDonald has finally answered the other one question you guys are probably wondering about, and that is, of course, the CSGO seven-day trade ban, and will it be reverted? Of course, his response on screen, and very unfortunate, guys, it seems that Valve's main stress and focus right now is stopping scammers in CSGO. Well, I'm, I'm really afraid of this because, of course, his, his tweet does say, quote-unquote, they've seen a 70% reduction in scamming tickets being reported, which is a great thing, but as that scamming number goes down, you know what else goes down? The CSGO active player base. As reported by Wicked Player a couple days ago, guys, this week and this week alone is the first time ever since 2015, nearly three years ago today, guys, that we have now had the active daily CSGO user base drop below 400,000 users. So yes, as we see a huge reduction in scammers, guys, we have now also seen a huge reduction in the CSGO player base. So I, I, I understand the morals of both sides here. Of course, you don't want your fan base being scammed. That's a terrible thing to be, of course, involved in. But the real question is, is what is Valve's stress? What's their importance here? Do they want to stop all the possible scammers in CSGO and all the cheaters, or do they want to have the longevity of the game? And of course, you have to have a mix and balance of both of those things. And I know personally myself, I've been scammed, so I really can't be a part of the crowd that's like, you know, what about these scammers? It's so easy not to get scammed. I can't even say that because I've been scammed myself, but I do know for a fact the seven-day trade ban would not have helped me not get scammed. I, I know I know the way I got scammed would not have been saved by this trade ban, so I'm very curious of all the ways out there that are actually being stopped by this, and I'm sure there are plenty of them, but you really got to question what is more important, the longevity of CSGO or stopping a few scammers from here and there, or maybe better off, maybe some of us out there should just educate you guys on how not to get scammed. And also make sure to note guys, in his tweet, he did not just say unlikely to revert this ban. He did not just say it's, it's probably not going to happen, we're probably not going to revert it. He said it's exceedingly unlikely they're not going to revert the ban, which pretty much means in Valve's terms, and when it comes to the IBA power situation, other situations out there they've taken a stance on, it pretty much means this seven day trade ban is set in stone and it's here to stay. But luckily for all you gamblers out there, we are well aware, guys, most sites out there have now taken away from even PUBG skins and CSGO skins. Those are in the past, unless PUBG actually eventually takes away their trade their trade ban as well. They've already moved on to things like H1Z1 skins, Rust skins. So all you gamblers out there, you have plenty of skins to choose from until maybe those game providers actually choose to, to ban their skins as well, which I highly doubt, but again, it's still possible in the future. But also on top of that, Valve has now gone fully anti-cheat. They are now offering you guys cash rewards to give them security disclosure on new hacks out there, new cheats out there. I'll link this forum article down below for all of you guys. You can actually get paid now to report things to Valve. And this is actually a very curious perspective to take because you guys can imagine all the Discord chats out there, all the all the, the groups out there for these hacks and these cheats. They are compiled of hundreds and hundreds of members and now you're going to see the strings be pulled away. It's kind of like when you're trying to bust a drug cartel, right? You start at the bottom, you work your way up, you find the guys who deal on the streets, you work your way up to the, the upper, upper levels. And so this is kind of the same thing and kind of props to Valve for doing this. It's going to be very curious to see what little rats out there rat out their cheat makers and eventually we go higher up and higher up and we'll see if it's actually effective for Valve. And lastly from Valve updates guys and Valve news here, I do want to share with all of you guys who are curious about how Valve actually chooses their major organizers or the people who actually host their majors. A quick TLDR for all of you guys who don't want to read the entire article, I'll link the full FAQ down below as well. They answer some pretty cool questions about the majors itself. A quick three step process guys, I'll make it very short here as well. They evaluate of course the proposals of people out there with a good experience, so of course your ES sells, your, your uh, dream hacks, your, your e-leagues as well. On top of that, many other organizers, they evaluate the people with the most experience, people who have, of course, history of putting on big tournament events. Very secondly, guys, they evaluate the time zone and location. And very lastly, they have to, of course, evaluate the trade-offs and the risk of those time zones and locations. Now, given this fact, of course, face it kind of snuck in there for our next major. They have past experience in league hosting, not exactly big major tournament hosting, but of course, uh, we, we, we can assume they're still going to do a great job production-wise. And very lastly, I do want to touch on the fact that they're going to be, of course, evaluating time location and, of course, time zone, which means that countries and places like maybe Australia are probably never going to have a major. We know, of course, IEM this past a couple weekends ago, their time zones, unfortunately enough for Australia, are not going to suit up for a lot of good viewership viewership out there. So it does mean for the future, we're probably almost likely never going to see an Australian major. And in other news, this story makes me, I don't know, I don't know why, this kind of makes me a little bit happy on the inside, guys. We do have Phantom Lord now being countersued by Twitch. If you guys 
do not know, Twitch is also owned by Amazon. So technically a transitive property here, we have Jeff Bezos, the, the richest man in the world, actually fighting back on Phantom Lord. Now, of course, it comes down to the lawyers over at Twitch, but still, it's the first time we've ever seen a CSGO gambler or anyone in this kind of sense actually being countersued by a company. Now, of course, people questioning why Phantom Lord was even suing Twitch in the first place. He had very little grounds to work with. I think the main assumption right now was, of course, previously was Phantom Lord was actually suing Twitch, a large corporation. Many times when you have even a flimsy story, you sue a large corporation, they might settle out of court to avoid controversy, and they'll give you a small sum, and in this case, probably a pretty decent sum of money just to settle out of court. Unfortunately for Phantom Lord, though, we do have Twitch now fighting back and countersuing him, which could bring up a lot of problems. Now, for all of you guys who are new to CSGO or new to the Phantom Lord scene, just go to YouTube and, and type in Phantom Lord Scam, and I'm sure you guys can find plenty of informative videos about that, but a quick TLDR as well. He was actually banned on the Twitch service. He can no longer stream on Twitch. He was actually banned on multiple accounts for defying their rules over there. He did own a gambling website, never publicly disclosed. He owned it, and of course, many of you guys are aware of the fact that he knew percentages. He was playing on the website himself. He was winning big pots against his viewers and other people out there while simultaneously owning the website, and he never publicly disclosed that information. Now, of course, many of you guys are aware of other streamers out there, some big names out there, Tom Gassell, also uh, Josh OG, and other ones being T. Martin as well. All three of those members getting away with it with very little, uh, very little punishment at all, but they never were idiotic enough or stupid enough to actually go ahead and sue Twitch for banning them or actually, uh, you know, suing anyone in that fa in that fact. They knew they had to get away. They, Tom Gassell left the country. He knew he had to get out of there right away and not be stupid enough like Phantom Lord to actually sue the platform himself. And now that he's being countersued, the fact that he owned a gambling website and did not disclose that publicly could be brought up again in court. And this means some big bills coming for him, at least in the lawyership department, guys. Even, even if he does somehow, you know, of course, uh, win a plea deal or get away scot-free from the, from the case itself, he's still going to have endless, endless payments to his lawyers. And who knows, guys? I saw a comment on the, th on the thread. I'll link it down below for all of you. Maybe his lawyers even know how stupid Phantom Lord is. Maybe they're milking this out as, as long as possible, and his lawyership fees are going to be out, out of this world, guys. So hopefully the best can happen. Hopefully Twitch wins this battle, guys. Phantom Lord just continuing to be really stupid. And also in other news this past week, guys, we also had, of course, NTC, now Tem Como. They actually managed to qualify for ESL Belo Horizonte. In that qualifier, guys, there was one last South American spot. They did fill that spot. To no surprise, they beat out all the competition, although it did go to the finale there, the grand, the grand final for that qualifier against Team Furia, and it actually went to a best of five. It went to map five. So a very close series there for now Tem Como. They did, did manage to actually grab that last spot for the 18 Belo Horizonte tournament. If I do remember correctly, guys, it's actually sometime in June. I believe June 16th, around $200,000 prize pool. So a pretty decent tournament for the team to go to. But here's actually one problem. With them qualifying, we now have SK Gaming, the organization. They now have contracts out for their current roster, including Stewie2K, as well as the brand new Now Tem Como roster. So of course, you guys are very well aware of in July, apparently that Now Tem Como roster will become our new SK Gaming roster. But for ESL Belo Horizonte, that is against the rules to actually own or have contracts with two teams there. That's actually a rule for many tournaments out there, if not all of them. Them. So apparently SK Gaming, according to Decay, will have to vacate one of those spots. It's very likely expected, guys, that SK Gaming will, of course, be the one to vacate that spot. Now Tem Como will take that spot. And of course, maybe we could even have uh, we could even have SK Gaming vacate that SK Gaming spot and even release those SK Gaming roster players and actually sign that Now Tem Como roster by June, a month earlier than expected, and have them play as SK Gaming in that tournament, if that makes any sense at all. So again, SK Gaming probably going to have to vacate a spot, guys. Either Now Tem Como or SK will have to vacate a spot. Who they're going to choose probably SK. And we're almost done with the episode, guys. There have been so many stories to cover. I'm kind of enjoying doing CSGO news like this, where I cover a lot, a lot of stories in one episode. Please leave a comment down below. Do you guys want shorter episodes with, with fewer stories or longer episodes with more stories? Because I, I kind of enjoy this format, kind of, so I can actually sit down and just recap like the entire week of news. But anyway, very important news out there. Of course, you guys know about the French Shuffle coming sometime soon. Now, this mainly includes, of course, the new French trio, Shock, Smiths, and Existence, who they're going to grab from either Envious or G2, but it does seem a new kind of a twist in the, in the ruffles here that is not a saying. A new twist has been revealed by HLTV and other sources out there. Apparently G2 is actually interested in the trio and whoever else they're going to sign. Now of course the G2 already having contracts with people like Kenny S. It does make sense they'd be interested in, the, in signing the trio as well and releasing their other players because of course any team out there who wants to sign this new trio of Shock, Smith's existence and whoever else is going to be with the team like Kenny S. is going to have to pay a lump sum or a fortune to actually get them. It does make sense for an existing organization who already has contracts with some of the players like G2 or Envious to actually sign 
selling them already. Now again, it's kind of crazy to see G2 having interest in them and also making it public, of course, through HLTV. Now everyone knows about it. We're going to be very curious to see in the next few months, guys, because remember, minor qualifiers. Now, of course, these teams don't have to worry about the minors, but even then, the major qualifiers coming up in the next few months here, and to practice for that needs to come up sometime soon. So it's going to be cool to see how soon these guys are going to change their rosters and who they're going to sign as their fourth and fifth. Who will join them, guys? And very lastly, guys, in today's episode of CSK News, we say goodbye to the player himself and former coach of Envious that is actually Maniac. Of course, he ended his career with LDLC. Very little success throughout 2017 and early 2018. If you guys remember, he actually coached Envious last throughout 2017 for a decent amount of time, and he came back to playing CSGO. He has now officially retired and left the scene after seeing a, 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 bit, a bit of a struggle here in success when it comes to CSGO. Now, of course, he's actually being replaced on LDLC's roster as well. If you guys remember the Misfits duo who was there for a long time even after they lost their roster, that's actually Amanek and Dave Odubek. They are now replacing Maniac on LDLC's new roster, which will be on screen for all of you. And it does seem LDLC will continue to make a few changes here as well. As Envious and G2 have their roster shuffle, LDLC naturally will as well. So we seem to have a French shovel coming sometime soon. It's going to start with LDLC. It'll probably finish up with G2 as well. So Maniac is now retired from CSGO, guys. Kind of, it's a sad thing to see these players retiring, as we also had players like Devil Walk returning to CSGO. Devil Walk, a former coach of Optic Gaming, a former coach of Fnatic. He's been coaching teams throughout. He also returned with his roster uh, on screen for all of you. A very, very, I guess you could say low tier, kind of unknown roster. But it's good to see players coming back. But of course, with every player who comes back, someone has to leave. So Maniac is now officially retired, guys. A CSGO legend. He will never be forgotten. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. I will see you guys all this weekend with some more. And uh, as always, hope you guys all enjoyed managing by the queue. And I will see you all uh, next time. Bye.